हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू दिस वीडियो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द टाइम डिवीजन मल्टीप्लेक्सिंग वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड व्हाट इज मल्टीप्लेक्सिंग एंड फ्रीक्वेंसी डिवीजन मल्टीप्लेक्सिंग एज वेल इन माय प्रीवियस वीडियो आई होप यू ऑल हैव सीन दैट वीडियो इफ नॉट आई रिकमेंड यू टू वॉच दैट फर्स्ट सो वॉट इज मल्टीप्लेक्सिंग आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू मल्टीप्लेक्सिंग इज द प्रोसेस बाय विच आई कैन सेंड मल्टीपल सिग्नल्स ओवर द सेम चैनल without interference so now here we have a lot of signals and a single channel so what were we doing in the frequency division multiplexing we were dividing the frequency or we were dividing the bandwidth we were allotting different frequencies for different signals so now if i classify the frequency division multiplexing there i had different frequencies for different message signals and how i used to do that with the help of different carriers so if i have the carriers at different frequencies i will modulate them and at the end i'll be having a frequency division multiplexing at the output so let's understand this so in fdm so let's suppose i have n message signals this is my first message signal second third and this is my nth message signal so what i am doing these are my range of frequencies so now here i am allotting fm1 frequency to my first message signal fm2 frequency to the second message signal fm3 frequency to the third message signal and fm n frequency to the nth message signal so now here i have not considered the concept of the guard band i have taken the guard band to be zero in this case when my first message signal is ending as soon as the second message signal will start occupying the frequency band so now if i observe this frequency so the total frequency occupied by n message signals would be equal to fm1 plus fm2 plus fm3 plus up to fm n so now here i cannot analyze anything because i have different message signals with different frequency bandwidth now here if i consider the bandwidth of all of the message signals to be same so let's suppose fm1 is equal to fm2 is equal to fm3 is equal to up to fm n so it is fm i have taken the bandwidth of all of the message signals to be identical that is fm so now here the total bandwidth would be so this was my bandwidth if i have all of them to be equal to fm so fm plus fm plus fm up to nth fm so now here i'll be having and now fm so now i hope you understood this concept where i don't have any guard band and the bandwidth is equal to n times fm so now you can understand that if i have the message signal with fm bandwidth and if i have n message signals so the total bandwidth requirement is very high which is n of fm so this is the disadvantage of fdm so now here i am considering the guard band as well because the guard band is very much required to avoid the cross talk and interference if the guard band is not there it is a very ideal condition to not get any cross talk or any other distortion so here i am considering that in between different message signals i have transferred a guard band as well so now these are my various message signals so this is first this is second this is third 
and this is my nth message signal. So now if I see the range of frequencies and I, again I am considering all of the bandwidth to be same. And now here this is my guard band FG. So every guard band I have taken to be same. So this is the ideal condition. I have supposed that all of the guard bands are having same frequency range. So I hope now you understood why I was using the guard band to avoid crosstalk or interference or any other type of distortion. So now here the total bandwidth requirement would be n times fm because fm I have n times plus n minus 1 times guard band. So here n times of fm plus n minus 1 times fg is required to send my n signal. So this is the bandwidth. I hope you know that the bandwidth the companies need to purchase and it will enhance the cost for the companies. So this type of multiplexing technique is costly. So now coming to the time division multiplexing. In the time division multiplexing what we are doing we are interleaving different message signals in the time domain and what does interleaving means? It means that I am sending different message signals at different instant of time. I have already discussed with you what is pulse code modulation. If you have not seen my previous video, I recommend you to watch the video on the pulse code modulation as well because without which it is not easy to understand the time division multiplexing. So now here, if I give the definition of the time division multiplexing, it will be the interleaving of different message signals in the time domain. So now here at different instant of time different message signals will go. Here at every instant of time I had every message signal but here I'll be having one message signal at one instant of time. I'll move further. I'll be having another message signal. So this is how it is different from this. So now we can take an example as well and we can take an example of a pipe. So now here I have a pipe to supply the water. So this is my point A and this is my point B. So now what I was doing in the frequency division multiplexing. So if I have n type of solutions I'll be taking n pipes so I'm dividing this big pipe into n different pipes to send my n different solutions from point A to the point B so now I hope you understood I have divided the width so now if I consider the time division multiplexing in the time division multiplexing what I am doing I am using the full pipe for one time instant to supply my first solution then full time is used to supply the second solution and so on. So I'll be using the full bandwidth in the time domain multiplexing. So now here I hope you understood the basic difference between the time division multiplexing and the frequency division multiplexing. So now here I am using the full bandwidth. I hope now you, you are very clear about the usage of full bandwidth in the time division multiplexing. So a single message signal is using the full bandwidth in time division multiplexing and now here if it is using the full bandwidth, if I had the full pipe width to transmit one solution it will be faster or I can say I require less bandwidth to transmit the same signal so here both are win-win situations so now coming to the circuit of time division multiplexing so now to understand the circuit you must understand the pulse code modulation first so now here what I am doing I am taking the pulse code modulated signal. So now here I have two samples. So these are two samples of my first message signal which are separated by TS. So I have taken the 
TS to be following the sampling theorem. So it is according to the Nyquist rate, I have taken the TS. So now this is my first sample, this is my second sample. In between, I don't have anything. So what I'll be doing in the time division multiplexing. So here, I'll be using this time to transmit another signal. So here, let's suppose I have another signal at this instant of time. 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 Now again, after this, I'll be having this. This was my first message signal. This was second, third, fourth, fifth. This is again first. Now this is again second. So this is how I am using the time gap between the two message signals. So I hope now it is very clear what is the process of the time division multiplexing. So here I am using the sampling duration to transmit different message signal. So how I'll be using this sampling duration. So I have a device which is called the commutator. So now if I talk about the circuit, the circuit is working upon a device which is called the commutator. So now here I have the first message signal, the second message signal, the third message signal up to the nth message signal. So now this is the circuit. So now here we have N message signal. So these are my N input message signals. So now it is passed to the commutator. So what is a commutator here? This is my commutator. So it's a special type of sampling device which is taking N samples in one TS. This is the duration TS. So now in the TS duration it is taking the N samples. So it's Again, a sampling device. So in TS duration, it will be taking N samples. So let's understand this. It's a device which is rotating anti-clockwise and when it is rotating anti-clockwise, it will take the sample of first message. It will rotate then take the sample of second message. Similarly, it will keep on rotating up till it will complete the full TS duration. So now here, let's suppose that TS is 1 millisecond. So now here, FS would be equal to 1000 hertz. So now FS is 1000 hertz, which means it is taking 1000 hertz frequency. So now here, in 1 millisecond, it is rotating 1000 times. So now here, if I have n number of samples, so it will be taking n into 1000 samples. So now I hope you understood. In one cycle, it is taking n samples. So let's suppose I have 8 samples. So in one cycle, it is taking 8 samples. And in one second, it is rotating thousand times so it means thousand hertz means one thousand rotations per second so now here if i have n message samples so it is taking n into thousand samples 
per second. So now I hope you understood what is a commutator. It is a sampling device only. So I already told you time division multiplexing only works upon the principle of PCM. So now here after the sampler we have the quantizer in the PCM. So after that we have encoder. So after the encoding it will give the bits to the channel. So I hope you understood all of the blocks here because I have already talked about them in my previous video where I was talking about the pulse code modulation. So I hope you understand what is quantizer, what is encoder. So here I have digital signal in the channel which comes to the decoder and here this is the decommunicator. So what is the decommutator doing? It is doing opposite of what the commutator was doing. So now it was, I said, it was moving in the anti-clockwise direction. So commutator was moving in the anti-clockwise direction and it was taking all of the samples. So decommutator will be moving in the clockwise direction and it will be giving the samples here. So here at the low pass filter I will be having MQKTS. So here I will be having the sampled output. So the sampled output can be recovered using the low pass filter. This is my reconstruction filter. With the help of that I can construct my message signal. So I will repeat this process up to MN. So it will rotate clockwise and it will give the samples up to nth sample and it will pass through the low pass filter and here I'll be getting the nth sample. So I hope now you understood the circuit and the functioning. So here if I have first symbol and if I have the second symbol. So this is my M1 message 1. This is also my message 1. So let's suppose we have the gap of let's suppose 20 millisecond in between the two message signals sample. So now here if I divide this 20 milliseconds into 4, 4 milliseconds. So if I take the second message sample after the 4 milliseconds. So this is my M2. After 4 milliseconds I have taken the M2 sample. Now again after 4 milliseconds I will be taking M3 sample again. After 4 milliseconds, I will be taking M4 sample. This is M4. After that, I will be taking M5 sample after 4 milliseconds. And this is M5. And after that, again M1. And this will keep on rotating. So now here, if I have 20 milliseconds, so this is 20 milliseconds, I have divided it into 4, 4 milliseconds. So, I, I am sending 5 message signals in this same time period. So now here I am taking the first sample of first message signal. So this is the first sample of the second message signal. So this was M1, this was M2, M3, M4, M5. Then again I will be having M1 which is going again for 4 milliseconds. So now I hope you understood if I divide the time. So the total time is T1 plus T2 plus T3 up to Tn. So now here I'll be having Tg as well. So this is the guard time. Again, I, I want to remove the distortions or crosstalk to remove these distortions and crosstalk. I'll be having this guard time. So this is guard time. So now what frequency I'll be taking. So I here took the 4 milliseconds gap between two symbols. So now I'll be taking this sampling frequency to be the maximum sampling frequency of all the message signals. So if I have n message signals sampling frequency I used to find out using the Nyquist criteria which was twice of the message frequency. So it is the maximum message frequency. So if I have n message signals, I will be seeing which message signal is having the highest frequency and I will be choosing my FS according to the highest message frequency. 
सो सैम्पलिंग फ्रीक्वेंसी इज चूजन अकॉर्डिंग टू द हाइएस्ट मैसेज फ्रीक्वेंसी अमंग द ऑल मैसेज सिग्नल्स so sampling frequency is chosen according to the highest message frequency among all samples so now i hope you are clear so now here if i take the samples to be capital n here how many samples i took i took five samples so i am generalizing it and like here i am taking n samples so i have n samples so here i have taken n samples so now here if i take the number of bits per sample to be small n so i have small n bits per sample so now here ts will be equal to n n tb so where tb is the bit duration so here i'll be having total capital n into n bits so i have capital n into n bits because bits per sample into sample will be giving me the total bits so capital n into n bits and one bit has tb duration so that sampling time will be equal to so what is the sampling time it is equal to the one cycle so one cycle is equal to capital n into n into tb so now here i know bit rate is equal to 1 upon tb and what is tb tb is equal to ts upon n n so 1 upon tb will be equal to n n upon ts which is equal to n n into fs so now this is my bit rate so i hope now you understood so i skip this step that tb is equal to ts upon capital n into small n and rb is equal to 1 upon tb rb is equal to bit rate it is equal to 1 upon bit duration so it is equal to nn upon ts so now here 1 upon ts is fs so bit rate is equal to nn into fs so now if i talk about n is equal to 1 so it's a star point and you should note that if n is equal to 1 so here if i am not considering much signal so here i considered five signals in one sample so now here if i am considering one signal only so that time time division multiplexing will be equal to the pulse code modulation so here the bandwidth will be also equal to the bandwidth requirement for the pulse code modulation so the bandwidth was e greater than equal to rb upon 2 so it is equal greater than equal to and then fs upon 2 so this is the bandwidth requirement so here i have not considered any synchronization bit so i don't have any synchronization bit here what is synchronization bit synchronization bit is actually an extra additional bit which is added after the nth bit so that the commutator and decommutator are synchronized so now here if i add some more bits so let's take the synchronization bit to be a so here if i have synchronization bit equal to a so now here the total number of bits would be n n plus a so this is my total number of bits so into tb will be equal to my ts now so here again my bit rate will be changed so rb will be equal to n n plus a into fs so now this is my updated bit rate when i am using a number of synchronization bits and actually the a synchronization bits are more than each of the bits in each sample so if i am taking let's suppose three bits here four bits here two bits here one bits here so the a bit would be more than them so a bit would be six so a bit would be more than each of the bits 
present in the message signal so now i hope you understood here we need an additional circuitry additional information so a is an additional information which is making the circuit complex so it is required to synchronize the commutator with the decommutator so i hope you understood the basic principle of time division multiplexing so i hope everything is now clear if you still have any doubt you can put the doubt in the comment and i'll try to resolve it as soon as possible i hope you like this video if you like it share it with your friends subscribe the channel and push the like button thank you